Tuesday Seventh Day Adventist, a revival of original Adventism and ancient Christianity, presents Escape for Thy Life, a program explaining prophecy. Current Affairs Theological Issues Right and freedom. Health issues. Natural disasters. Comparative religion. Creation versus evolution. Escape for thy life. Good day. This is Brother Medina for Tuesday, Seventh Day Adventist. And please let us start with a word of prayer. Gracious, loving Father, please be with us as we enter into this study. Bless everyone listening and help them to understand the sense and meaning of what is being said. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Well, today our study is why we are called Tuesday Seventh Day Adventist. Yes, you get it. Why we are called Tuesday Seventh Day Adventist. And we want to take this time for a small theological study with you as to why we are called Tuesday Seventh Day Adventist. Who is Tuesday SDA? That's what we want you to know. Furthermore, we are looking at the words Tuesday Seventh Day Adventist in a broken way, as three different words Tuesday, Seventh Day, and Adventist. And we want to explain to you what we are all about. Yes, my dear people. Now, first of all, let us look at the name Adventist. Let's start from the bottom and we'll go to the top two here. Let's look at the word Adventist. 
The word Adventist comes from the word Advent. And Advent means looking for the coming of Christ. Let us look at a dictionary meaning of this word. We are looking at the Woods Word Concise English Dictionary, page 10. Here is what we are told, I quote, Advent, a coming or arrival, the first or the second coming of Christ, end of quote. Did you see that? So we are told that the word Advent means the first or the second coming of Christ. In this sense, since Christ already came, went back to heaven, we are looking at his second coming. And again, here is the actual meaning of the word Adventist in the same dictionary, page 12. I quote, Adventist, one who expects a second coming of Christ. End of quote. And this is what the word Adventist means. It means we are actually looking for the second coming of Jesus Christ. Yes, my dear people. Now, let us look at some scriptures that clearly shows we are to look for the second coming of Christ. And with the time we have, we want to go through these scriptures as fast as is possible. First of all, we look at Matthew chapter 24, and we look at verse 42 and verse 44. Here is what we are told. I quote, verse 42. Watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. This is Jesus speaking. And he's telling us to watch, because we do not know when he's going to come back. And then when we look at 44, again, here is what we are told. Therefore be also ready, for in such an hour as you think not, the Son of Man cometh. Here is Jesus again, telling us that we are to watch. Watch for the second coming of Christ. Not physically watch, but spiritually watch by the way we live. Furthermore, if we go to Matthew chapter 25 and verse 13, here is what we are told, I quote, Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. End of quote. Yes, my dear people. So all these scriptures clearly shows us about the second coming of Christ and it tells us we are to watch. And that's what makes us Adventists. Now here is what we are told in Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 28. I quote, So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many and to unto them, notice this, and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. Now it is not Christ that will be without sin unto salvation. We are the ones. So we are supposed to be without sin, sin free, unto salvation. But we are told unto them that look for him. Therefore we are to look for the second coming of Jesus Christ. Yes, my dear people, this is what makes us Adventist. And then if we look, at another important scripture here, 2 Peter chapter 3, we read from verse 10 to 14, here is what we are told, I quote, But the day of the Lord shall come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burnt up, seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy behavior and godliness looking for, now here comes the part, looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God when the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. And it continues to tell us, nevertheless we according to his promise, Look for a new heaven and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. And furthermore, in verse 14, we are told, Wherefore, beloved, seeing that you look for such things, be diligent that you may be found of him in peace, without spot, and blameless. That is to be found sin free. This is why we teach sin freeness. And all this clearly shows us of the second coming of Christ. And this is why we are Adventists. We are Adventists because we are looking for the second coming of Jesus Christ. Yes, my dear people. Now let us look at the word seventh day. Now that same seventh day phrase can be found in the fourth clause of the Ten Commandments. Yes, my dear people. If you look at Exodus chapter 20, verse 8 to verse 10, here is what we are told, I quote. 
Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of Yahweh thy God. And then we are told, in it thou shalt not do any work, etc. So here we are told the seventh day is the Sabbath of Yahweh thy God. So we know one thing for sure. The seventh day is identified as the Sabbath of Yahweh thy God. If we look at Exodus chapter 16, and we read verse, in verse 30, we would see that even before the Ten Commandments were spoken by God on Mount Sinai, it was the seventh day upon which man was called upon to rest. And one thing you must never say, that the, the orders of the day has changed. The orders of the day has not changed. The first day then is still the first day now. The seventh day then is still the seventh day now. There is no evidence anywhere in any document or anywhere that the order of the days has changed. So here is what God said in Exodus chapter 16 and verse 30. I quote, it tells us this. So the people rested on the seventh day. End of quote. Did you see that? The people rested, we are told, on the seventh day. But that is not all. A special emphasis is placed on the seventh day in Hebrews chapter 4. And let us look at Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 4 and see what it tells us. This emphasis that is placed on that day helps us to understand that the first day of the week, which is Sunday, is not to be called the Christian Sabbath. Because the Bible clearly tells us it's the seventh day. Now in Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 4, here is what we are told. For he spake in a certain place of the seventh day on this wise. And God did rest the seventh day from all his works. Did you see that? He spake in a certain place of the seventh day. So as far as God is concerned, the important thing about all of this is the seventh day Sabbath. Now, we are told that those who are the people of God must keep the seventh day Sabbath. So those who tell you the day is abolished and you're not supposed to keep it. In the New Testament, we are told that the people of God must keep the seventh day Sabbath. Let us look at Hebrews chapter 4 again and we look at verse 9. I quote, There remained therefore a rest to the people of God. Did you see that? Now the word rest there is not the original word for that verse. The Greek word is sabbatismus. That's the Greek word, sabbatismus. And it means literally Sabbath keeping. It's a noun and it literally means Sabbath keeping. Let me quote for you from two dictionaries and none of them are Adventist dictionaries. In Tears Greek English Lexicon of the New Testament, page 565, here is what we are told. Sabbatismus, to keep the Sabbath, a keeping Sabbath, end of quote. And when we look at Spiros, Zohadiates, the Complete Word Study Dictionary, New Testament, page 1268, here is what we are told. Sabbatismus, to keep the Sabbath, a keeping of a Sabbath, a rest as on the Sabbath, end of quote. Did you see that? So what we are being told here, the actual word sabbatismus is sabbath keeping. So what we are being told here, the actual word is sabbatismus, which means sabbath keeping. Let's read this verse according to that meaning. We quote, it says this here, There remained therefore a sabbath keeping to the people of God. Yes, my dear people. So this clearly shows us that the people of God must keep the sabbath. So one would say, well, yes, that's a spiritual Sabbath. But no, yes, you must have a spiritual rest on the seventh day. The context of that is the seventh day. That's why verse 4 tells us, For he spake in a certain place of the seventh day on this wise, and God did rest the seventh day from all his works. So God rested the seventh day, and that is the context of Sabbatismus. So let's read again. In Hebrews chapter 4, we read verse 9 to verse 11. There remained therefore a Sabbath keeping to the people of God. For he that is entered into his rest, he also had ceased from his own works as God did 
from his. And God didn't see it on a Sunday. It was the day we call Saturday, which is the Sabbath. It continues. Let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. End of quote. Did you see that, my dear people? So this is the reason why we keep the seventh day Sabbath. We keep the seventh day Sabbath because that day particularly clearly shows that we are following what the Creator tells us to do. And now we need to look at the next word, Tuesday. Yes, my dear people. So we now come to the word Tuesday. We have already discussed Adventist and we have already spoken about Seventh Day. Now we are talking about the word Tuesday to make up Tuesday Seventh Day Adventist. Why we are called Tuesday Seventh Day Adventist? Now the word Tuesday is an ancient Greek word and it literally means sacrifice. Yes, my dear people. Let me read for you from the Complete Word Study Dictionary, New Testament, by Spiros Zohadiates, page 746. Here is what we are told, I quote, Tuvia, the act of sacrificing or offering, by metonymy, the thing sacrificed, metaphorically, of service, obedience, praise offered to God, an offering, oblation, end of quote. So what does this tell us? This tells us that sacrifice is literally something offered to God, or sacrifice is not just only the act of offering, but is the thing itself that is offered. Yes, my dear people. The word tuzia is the word sacrifice, and it literally means the act of sacrificing, the thing sacrificed, and a form of obedience to God, which is also sacrifice. By calling ourselves Tuzia, we mean that we have given up all selfishness, or all of self, sacrificed all of self for the sake of the love of God, which is our sacrifice to God, and it is based upon the sacrifice, Jesus Christ. Let's go over that again. By calling ourselves Tuzia, we mean that we have sacrificed Tuzia, given up all self for the sake of love to God as our sacrifice. And also, that is based upon the sacrifice of Christ, Tuzia. Now, here is our sacrifice to God in self-denial, number one, and in obedience to his will, number two. We offer ourselves to God, giving up self, and obeying his will. This is clearly explained in Romans chapter 12 and verse 1, where the Greek word tuzia is using the word sacrifice there. Let's look at it. I quote, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. Did you see that? A living tuzia, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Did you see that? So we are to present ourselves as a sacrifice to God, which is our service. That is first denying self, and also the service of love through the Holy Spirit working in us. Furthermore, if we look at Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 2, we will also see that Jesus Christ gave himself as a sacrifice to Zia for us. Thus he, Christ, is the Tuzia or the sacrifice. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 2 tells us, And walk in love, as Christ also had loved us, and given himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to the to God. End of quote. So Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 2 shows us that Jesus Christ is the to the, the sacrifice. So why then do we call ourselves to the Seventh-day Adventist? We call ourselves Tuzia because the Bible clearly shows us in Psalms chapter 50, if we read from verse 1 to verse 6, it clearly tells us that in the judgment of the last days, those who will be gathered unto Yahweh as his own are those who have been Tuzianized or are made Tuzians in a real sense of the word. 
We are looking at the Old Testament, the Hebrew, but we are looking at the Greek translation of the Hebrew Old Testament. And in the Greek translation here, the Septuagint, the word for sacrifice there is Tuthia. So those who Christ gathers in, in the judgment, as his people, as his own, has made a, his covenant with him by Tuthia, meaning by becoming Tuthians, by being Tuthianized. Let's look and see this in Psalm chapter 50, and we'll read from verse 1 way down to verse 6 to show the context and other things. I quote, the mighty God, even Yahweh, had spoken and called the earth from the rising of the sun unto the going down thereof. So God has always been calling people to serve him. Every sun rise to all the sunsets. People are constantly being convicted by God all over the world to give up their sins and to come to him. It goes on. Out of Zion, and Zion is a symbol of the church, out of Zion, the perfection of beauty, God had shined. Did you see that? Zion, the church, is called the perfection of beauty because God is in Zion, the church, and he's shining out in them. So God in the saints make the saints perfect, make them perfectly beautiful, make them have the perfection of beauty. So one cannot have God dwelling in him and at the same time have sins dwelling in him. He must be sin free. And this is why we are told, out of Zion the church, the perfection of beauty, God had shined. Verse 3 tells us, Our God shall come, that's the second coming of Christ, and shall not keep silence. A fire shall devour before him, and it shall be very tempestuous round about him. That is at the second coming. We are told, He shall call to the heavens above, now that is where the books of remembrance, the books of iniquity, the book of life is. They are in heaven. So we are told he shall call to the heavens above and to the earth, that is where we are, whose names are recorded in the books, that he may judge his people. Did you see that? Call to heaven, the books in heaven, call to earth where we are, that he may judge his people. Notice he is judging the church, his people. Then he says, gather my saints together unto me, those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Did you see that? Those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. The actual Hebrew says, those that have cut my covenant with me by sacrifice. And the word there is tuzia in the Greek. And then verse 6 tells us, and the heavens shall declare his righteousness, which is the law, for God is judge himself. Selah, and Selah means take note. So God wants us to take note of this fact. Those who are going to be gathered together in the judgment of the last days, and who are going to be identified as his people for eternal salvation, are people that have cut God's covenant with him by sacrifice. In other words, they have been Tuzianized, made Tuzian. So, the verdict of God gathering his people to eternal salvation is only for those who have been Tuzianized or made genuine Tuzian. Now, this should show us our purpose as Tuzian Seventh-day Adventists and our mission in the world. And we have to take note of this fact. So, how can we summarize what we have just seen here? What we have just seen here is point number one. The only people who are to be gathered into eternal salvation in the judgment of the last days are God's people who have been Tuzianized. Point number two. God's people living in the time of the last judgment upon the church will be Tuzians, sacrifice in spirit and in truth. And point number three. Our mission in these last days is to make people become Tuzians by infecting them with the Tuzian spirit we have from God through the faith of Jesus Christ. Yes, my dear people, these are exactly what we are to do. And these following points are also true logically. Point number one again. The name Tuzia, placed before Seventh-day Adventist, does not speak about a new Adventist sect 
That's not what we are, a new Adventist sect. The word Tuesday is used there in its place as an adjective to describe what kind of Adventists we are. Yes, my dear people. We are Tuesdayanized Seventh-day Adventists, Adventists that have accepted Christ, the Tuesday, and thus have been infected with the spirit of Tuesday through Christ, the Tuesday, being in us. Yes, my dear people. This is why we are called Tuesday Seventh-day Adventists. Now, some people may ask, why don't you call yourself another name? Why do you call yourself Seventh-day Adventist, like the traditional Seventh-day Adventist organization? Yes, you have two here, but call yourself by another name. To this we answer, the name Seventh-day Adventist is not a trademark name, like the General Conference of Seventh-day Adventists in the United States have trademarked the name, and as a result of that, have taken their brethren to court because they used that name without being associated with the General Conference. So it is not a trademark name as far as God is concerned. The name Seventh-day Adventist is indicative of the faith that we have. Yes, my dear people, Seventh-day Sabbath keeping is the sign of Yahweh, the one true God and Creator. And Adventist means we are morally and spiritually looking for the second coming of Jesus Christ. So we must live that way. But again with Tuesday. Tuesday, going before that, describes what kind of Adventists we are. So here is what Mrs. Ellen G. White, an inspired writer, inspired by the Holy Spirit, said about the words Seventh Day Adventist within Adventism. I quote from Selected Messages, Book 2, page 103, here is what she says, I quote, And those who are seeking to understand this message will not be led by the Lord to make an application of the word that will undermine the foundation and remove the pillars of the faith that has made Seventh-day Adventists what they are today. Did you see that? So, Seventh-day Adventists are supposed to be what they are today by the pillars of the faith. So the name Seventh-day Adventist stands for the faith of Adventism. And again in the very same book, page 115, here is what she said, I quote, Those who have had the actual experience in the unfolding of the prophecies have been made what they are today, Seventh-day Adventists, by these prophecies. So we are made Seventh-day Adventists by the faith of Adventists not by association with a general conference or a South Caribbean conference or whatever. If you have the faith of Adventism, you are a Seventh-day Adventist. But if you have been infected with the spirit of Tuesday, giving up all selfishness for the sake of love to God and love to your fellow men, because the sacrifice, the Christ, is in you, leading you, then you are a Tuesday Seventh-day Adventist. Yes, my dear people. So in conclusion, we are therefore Tuesday Seventh-day Adventists because we are led by the Tuesday, the sacrifice, Jesus Christ himself, and we have the spirit of Tuesday or self-denying service to God and our fellow men in us, given to us by Christ the Tuesday being in us. We have the sign of the true God and creator Yahweh, which is the Seventh-day Sabbath, and we are looking for the second coming of Jesus Christ. This is why we are Tuesday Seventh-day Adventists. And in closing, my dear people, we, we need to say this to you. Like it or not, anyone who is to be gathered to God in the judgment of the last days must be Tuesdayanized. You, can, you can't run from this. You can't hide from this. If you are a normal Seventh-day Adventist out there from the general organization, if you are Pentecostal or Catholic, for you to be passed in that judgment in which God is gathering his saints together, you must cut God's covenant with him by sacrifice. You must be Tuesdayanized. And we are just the first crop. We are just the first crop that have been Tuesdayanized. And we are spreading to different countries. We are now in Pakistan. We are now in England. We are in Grenada. We are in St. Vincent. We are in the USA and we are in other countries of the world where we have now put in a foothold. 
and there are pockets of believers in different countries of the world. Yes, we started from Trinidad and we have spread all over the world. And this is the work that we are to do. And we will finish the work in our generation because true religion must be presented to the people. And true religion is Tuesdayized Seventh day Adventist. This is why we are called Tuesday Seventh day Adventist. May God add his blessing to you as you too become a Tuesdayan in Jesus' holy name. Amen.